Hey everybody, my name is George Atal at the NFL Players Association. I'm joined today by my dear friend and the executive director of the Trust, Bahati Van Pelt. We're going to be doing a series of these Facebook Lives uh, here through the rest of the year to sort of take you inside the NFLPA, whether you're a fan, a current player, a former player, an agent, a uh, member of the media, anybody who's interested in how we run things at the NFL Players Association, what our programs and services are. Um, this is it. This is who we are. And uh, again, I'm pleased to be joined today by Bahati. Bahati, you're three years old. Yes, sir. We had our birthday yesterday, so we are a toddler walking and talking. And how does that feel? <laughs> no, it feels good. You know, it's, uh, you know, you and I talk all the time, so uh, it's amazing to think when you look back at where we started uh, in 2013, and uh, I remember even just having the thoughts of, you know, is the 800 number going to work uh, when people call? Uh, I think I talked to you about the website, you know, where you actually click on the website, would, you, would the links work? Would you actually be able to go to something? Uh, you know, uh, when we sent guys on the road to hospitals and stuff, would the doctors know what to do? Uh, so all of those things that you think about when you're starting something brand new, but uh, to look back to where we were then and where we are now, it's uh, truly amazing. It's, and it's really because of the, uh, you know, the engagement that our players our former players have had with us. They've given us the opportunity to serve them, and uh, hopefully we have held up our end of the bargain with providing uh, quality service to them. So we're three years in, and you and I are talking about the trust, taking for granted that people know what it is, which yes. is kind of an amazing <laughs> progression here yes. in such a short amount of time. But uh, it's important to remember that you know, in, in 2011, when the players and owners got together to negotiate the 2011 CBA, the trust was a thought that that group of active player leaders when you were just a development guy yes. in Jacksonville, yeah, exactly. yes. um, you know, they negotiated real money and real resources to build this organization. So explain to people, you know, sort of what the trust is from inception okay. and philosophically what yeah. we have in mind, what yeah, we well, try to do. But I think you, you know, we'll start where you, what, what you just talked about is that, you know, the vision of active players during the negotiating process with the owners to have the foresight uh, to establish funding for former player benefits and services. That's something that had, to my knowledge, had never ever uh, been thought of or executed before. So, uh, you know, before we go any further, you know, the wonderful work that those active players in that room uh, did in order to get this funding, you know, we can't say how thankful we are. Uh, to those group of men that fought for these benefits. So out of that, you know, the NFLPA developed a committee, the Life Cycle Committee, uh, which was charged with coming up with what an organization would look like to serve former players. And then out of that came the branding of the trust. Uh, and then, you know, I was hired in 2013 uh, as executive director. We quickly hired a staff in October, uh, right after I came on board, and then we launched the organization in November. So uh, everything happened pretty quickly once uh, the concept of what the trust would be came together. And so we're really here to provide services and resources for former players as they transition out of the NFL into whatever is that next phase of law. You just kind of transition and move from one thing to the next. So uh, we built the trust really around with uh, guys they transition, so financial services, resources, uh, medical resources for guys to go to hospitals and get assessments so they know where they are physically. We have a scholarship, career services, all of the things that go into making that transition from something that you probably did since you were six, seven, eight years old to trying to figure out what that next step is post-career. So I don't wanna put you totally on the spot, but <laughs> your three year anniversary came and you guys have compiled some interesting. Uh, so, you know, we have a, a, a large number of guys that are waiting on resources. And, I, I, you know, you and I have talked about this medical benefit that we're developing for older former players. Some of the other things that are coming online. We have a large group of guys that all they're doing is waiting on that benefit to activate. And then we've got the guys that are using the scholarship. They're going to the brain and body facilities. They're working with EXOS. Uh, they are in career services with either Athlife or Lee Hecht Harrison, and that number is that 2770 number. Uh, uh, the scholarship, we've given away over $11 million uh, 
uh, for guys to go back and either finish their undergraduate or graduate degree or get professional uh, certifications or vocational degrees. Can you say that number again? Yeah, over $11 million in three years that's, for continuing education. That's incredible. And we've seen from the, from the homework that we've done on this issue that continuing education or even finishing an undergraduate degree if you came in uh, uh, as an underclassman, um, that is one of the keys to a successful, successful transition uh, not just out of football, but as a as a citizen of the United States in general. Absolutely, you know. One of the misconceptions I know you know, and uh, you know those that be watching may or may not know, is that you know more than fifty percent of NFL players that are actively playing already have their degree when they come in the league. But there's still that number of guys that transition out of the NFL that need to go back and finish. Uh, and while there have been some uh, benefits that have been able to help a little bit and assist a little bit in that area. What we've done at the trust has significantly increased the number of guys that can go and finish those degrees, get an advanced degree if they want, or they could just go and get a vocational or professional certification so they can be more equipped to be successful in whatever their chosen career field is. So we're entering into sort of the last third of the NFL season. And one thing that, that we really take a lot of pride in as an organization is following players, not just you know while they're playing, but as they transition. I mean, that's the entire purpose of, of why the trust was created. I wanna ask you about the service for players as we wind down who may not sign on with a team next year. Yes. And what the trust can do for that group of players who find themselves either on IR now uh, um, or are you know not picked up on a roster, for, become free agents, and don't get picked up. What can the trust do for those group of men? Great question. So uh, we actually define those guys as inactive players. So they are a guy that was on an active roster, as you just mentioned, currently not on an active roster, but not transitioning out of the NFL. So for uh, for language purposes, we call our RPP program, which is Release Player Program. And we uh, work in conjunction with Exos, our partner in that space. And we provide, we pay for workouts for guys to go to an Exos facility. Uh, and you can find all of the different areas where Exos is located on our website, uh, playerstrust.com. I had to make sure I got that plug you in there. have to. We'll do all uh, the plugs. We'll do all <laughs> but, the plugs. Uh, but on our website, we list the Exos facilities and where inactive guys that have two or more credited seasons, that is, the, that is the piece that's important. So for any guy that has two or more credited seasons that is currently in that inactive uh, phase, he can go to an Exos facility and work out on the trust dime. So we'll pay not only for the workout, but there's also you get one meal. Usually it's uh, breakfast or lunch since most guys are early risers and they work out either in the morning group or the uh, uh, early uh, afternoon group. And so it allows guys to do two things. One, they can stay in shape uh, and they don't have to suffer the cost of trying to uh, get peak performance uh, training. And then also it gets us connected to them. So if for some reason they do not get back on an active roster, they can already begin to make the connection within the trust and start that transition that we've been talking about. Great, and one really important note, I think that, that viewers and other people who may watch this afterwards, it's three years for an NFL player to vest and to become eligible for the full range of benefits uh, that, that are negotiated in the CBA. So this program for players who are eligible in two years absolutely, or more gives them just another chance to reach that third year and yes. get vested. So staying yes. in shape becomes, you know, obviously it's your, your body's your livelihood as an NFL absolutely. player. Um, so staying in shape helps, um, get, you know, improve the chances of you reaching that goal of becoming fully vested in this league. Um, Bahati, again, you know, I think this is a, an important note on health and safety. Uh, is there one or two um, service or services that you guys provide on player health and safety yeah. that you want to share? The, big, the biggest uh, service that we provide is called our brain and body assessment. So we work with uh, medical partners throughout the country, uh, and I got to make sure I plug them, uh, UNC Chapel Hill, Mass General in Boston, uh, Tulane down in New Orleans, the Cleveland Clinic. Uh, they have three locations. They have one in Cleveland, one in Fort Lauderdale, and one in Las Vegas, uh, and then Hogue, which is out in Orange County. 
and uh, we work with them to provide what we call brain and body assessments. I always say it's a fancy name for a really good physical. Uh, and it's head to toe. Uh, there is some neurocog components that involve, but it's also an orthopedic exam, body mass index, blood work, all of the things that uh, you would expect when you get a full service physical. And it is a great way for guys that have just left the league to have a baseline of where they are physically. So if things change, as they grow older, they'll always be able to go back and look and see where they were the minute they left the league. And then we also have a follow-up uh, program in place to either A, bring guys back to the facility that they went to originally, or connect them with a local primary care physician in whatever area they choose to retire in. And then that way they can, well, I call it taking ownership of their medical experience. You know, when you're, when you're an active player, Everything is done for you pretty much at the facility through the team doctors and the trainers. When you transition out of the league, you have to take ownership of that experience. And this is a great way for not only for guys to get great information, but to begin that process of them taking ownership of their medical experience. So one of the areas that, that you know we like to look at on the medical front as an entire organization, and if you're a former player listening to this, um, it's important to take note. When Bahati says we partner with these with these clinics and with these medical centers, that means that resources are dedicated to getting you to the facility, and, um, and you know basically at no cost to you. Absolutely. So if you're a former player, all you have to do is go to the website, pick up the phone, and call. What's the phone number? Eight six six seven two five zero zero six three. So you call that phone number and you you reach out and you talk to a program manager. Uh, you get enrolled and then the rest is sort of history. They walk you through the process of ensuring that you get uh, the best possible service that you can. Um, and, George, and George, just that, I think something that we always mention that's also uh, critically important is that these are benefits that players have earned. You know, this is right. not, it's not a handout, it's not a, a test case, it's not a beta case. You know, these are things that active players fought for, that former players uh, believed in, that were important and that as a right of your service of playing the National Football League, your union has now developed these resources as an earned benefit. So we position it just as your 401k, your line of duty, your workers comp, your pension, uh, annuity, all of those benefits that you earn through service in the NFL, you're now able to earn the benefit of the trust through your service in the NFL. That's great. So for a lot of people who look at this trust and think, oh, there's resources, obviously you're the executive director, we do a lot of speaking as often as we can about this. How has the organization grown? Because what, what <laughs> I think, what I think is, is very fascinating uh, is this sort of, oh, it's just like, you know, talk, give us a scope for how big yeah. this institution is. So we started out, there were six uh, full-time staff members. Uh, I made number seven uh, when we first started. We had uh, four program managers. Uh, we now have seven program managers. Uh, at the time, we had everyone basically doing everything. We now have an engagement team, which is charged with going out and actively uh, engaging with players to have them come into the services and then we actually have a service team that is dedicated to referring guys to resources, connecting them to partners, and then the follow-up piece. Uh, so we started out with seven, we now have 20. Uh, we also started out with four captains, so we have what we call captains, which are former players that uh, engage and host events and really provide that peer-to-peer -peer, uh, dialogue with guys that are transitioning out of NFL. We started with four, we now have 13. Uh, we also have strategically put them in areas of the country where we know former players live. So Florida, Georgia, California, Texas, North Carolina, you know, the areas where we know guys are going to move to post-career. Uh, and so, you know, we've grown from, I think the we were averaging about 55 to 60 guys per month enrolling to now we're averaging over 100 wow. guys per month enrolling. So, uh, you know, we're, we're in that accelerated growth phase that uh, occurs when you start out with something new, and uh, we call it drinking from a fire hose. Well, <laughs> it's kind, it's for, for anybody it watching is. who has kids, once you turn three, then all of a sudden everything else starts Absolutely. to grow much so faster. So we're, we're in the why phase now. You know, if, for those that have kids, everything is why. So that's what we're looking at. Why are we doing this? Why is this important? Why do we have this gap of services? 
what can we do now to ensure that we're covering all of the uh, facets of what it takes for a player to transition effectively once he leaves the league. Excellent. Anything else in the last 90 seconds or so of our Facebook Live uh, that you want to share with folks? I think a couple of things. One, I just want to say thank you to uh, our staff here internally, uh, the trust staff. Uh, we have a tremendous staff downstairs that is passionate about serving and uh, seeing players be successful post-career. I uh, want to say thank you to our captains, uh, to the former players that work with us to engage with our members. Uh, thank you to the NFLPA, uh, because without uh, their support and guidance, we would not have had the success we've had. But most importantly, thank you to every former player that has enrolled with us in the first three years. Thank you to those players that may have not enrolled, but have referred us. Uh, and thank you uh, for the opportunity to serve you and to have an impact, hopefully, on you having a successful successful transition. And we're just looking forward to continue to serve. You know, that's that's really what we're what we're about. And uh, we've had some success here in the first three years, and we're looking to have more as we continue to move forward. Well, continued success to you guys. And obviously, um, you know, we're very proud of all the work we've done for our former players community. This wraps up our first Inside the NFLPA Facebook Live. I'm George Atala. This is Bahati Van Pelt. Thanks for tuning in. See you next Tuesday at noon.